I was training and training and training, getting more and more frustrated with the clothes. I was as hardcore as they come, and I felt like I didn't have a place in that culture. This idea that like you have to get thin before you can even ride a bike because you have to wear those clothes. This is like a barrier to women doing the sport. I'm Jen Kyle Whalen. I have brown hair, blue eyes, and a boy's middle name. My love for bikes started at a very young age. Here's Jenny with a new bicycle. And now it's a full-blown obsession. I've raced road bikes around the world with some of my idols. Now I'm hosting this talk show on bikes as an excuse to hang out and ride with some super interesting people. My next guest is a true boss, Machines for Freedom entrepreneur Jen Kriske, a women's cycling brand that really changed the industry. On a basic human level, what people need the most is connection. When you go to a lot of these group rides, there's really no women's community. So I spent a lot of time riding with different groups all around the city. It's really cool now to see women coming together. That's such an important part of cycling, and that's what makes cycling so special. Can we take a peek? Yeah, this is where the magic happens. What's some of like the unique features that you are proud of with your stuff? The big part is the fit. When I was developing this, I worked with a pattern maker that had worked for pretty much all of the major brands, and people were still bringing her men's patterns and saying, can you just grade this down? You can always tell when you put one of those jerseys on, too. The sleeves are weird. It's like tight here. It actually goes in at the hips. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I just received my first order of MFF, and I'm stoked in bold. I've been searching for new kits for months. I've been rocking a single set of terribly padded shorts and an old stretched out jersey for over a year. I tried my kits on tonight and I literally did not want to take them off. I look so cool and I feel amazing. They fit like a dream, they feel like a dream. I cannot wait to get on my bike tomorrow. Thought I'd send some love your way. Happy cycling. Stored it's away. It's so special what you're doing. Like it really is. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to keep this? I might be a little <laughs> hormonal. <laughs> Do not apologize for your emotions. <laughs> These no, are real feelings. I'm obsessed with the models that you pick. You have every range of body. You have a lot of ethnicities represented. We talk about it and we're very conscious about it of like, is there someone in here that we feel is like not being represented? The minute we started incorporating a curvier figure into our photo campaigns, mm -hmm. we sold out of extra larges. You know, whether it's shops or whoever saying like, hey, the size doesn't sell. And I'm like, the size doesn't sell because people are not expecting to find what they need in your store. How did the name come to you? You know, I was looking at like women's relationship to bikes. Women weren't even allowed to race until the 80s. So all of these pictures you see that are glorifying racing like in the 60s and 70s, it's like it's cool and all, but we literally have no place in that history, in, the, in that story. The bike basically became like a symbol of this women's liberation. My whole goal with machines was like, I want this to be as big as possible to prove to all these people that like this market is worth listening to. That MO collided with lots of much bigger topics around representation and body positivity, all of these like bigger cultural conversations that are happening in the world today. You go to that place of like, I'm just making cycling clothes. Like, what can we do? And one of the things we can do is we can put out positive images of women. It's like, yeah. this is a huge win for yeah. all women in this industry and all women that, in this sport. When you think of women on bikes, machines is gonna be like the first brand that comes into your mind.